Hi everyone, my name is Mad Matt Lugos and welcome back to Death Stranding. So, last time we made our way across through some BT infested areas to get to the geologist and we then made our way in to, across to the paleontologist, transported a bomb. He hooked us up with a gas mask, we went into this sort of gas sort of chasm here where a bunch of cargo <clears throat> with a bunch of sort of fossil things that connected to a fossilised beach for millions of years in the past. Uh, had been dropped so we collected them um, and now we just have to make our way to the Evo Devo specialist or whatever she was called uh, so that Hartman can piece together a few more parts of the puzzle to discover the history of the Death Stranding what's happened in the past with other extinction events just before we do that though I'd, uh, I'd forgotten about some interview logs that here uh, about Lucy, which was uh, Sam's Sam's wife, Sam's partner, who was pregnant, who died with her child, um, which caused a big void out, and Sam has kind of been avoiding the whole thing. So this might be quite insightful. So I don't know how it's it's from someone who's unknown. So UCA zero one zero three two has been wiped off the map by a void out, leaving nothing but an enormous crater. Terrorism was suspected at first, but the investigation, spearheaded by Bridges, quickly ruled out the possibility and eventually concluded that the cause was the corpse of a civilian which, has been left, which had been left to necrotize unnoticed in an urban residential area. The deceased was Lucy Strand. Tragically, she was also seven months pregnant. The child had already been named Lou. The cause of death was ruled a drug overdose. Possibly intentional. Though that remains unconfirmed at this time. Surveillance data was sent to Bridges headquarters for analysis, but the results were inconclusive. Ruled a drug overdose. Lucy's husband, Sam Strand, had been away for some time and became concerned when he was unable to contact his wife. Though he attempted to return home, the void out was triggered immediately after his arrival. Being a repatriate, Sam was the sole survivor of the blast. As the deceased was the wife of a prominent member of Bridges, who himself is the son of President Strand, public support for the organisation suffered. Many criticised the crisis management team's handling of the situation as well as the priorities of the organisation and President Strand herself. Some believe that Sam Strand was involved with his wife's death and that he should be held to account. While both the administration and Bridges adamantly defended him for a time, public pressure continued to mount. In a gesture his co-workers suspect was his way of taking responsibility, Sam resigned from Bridges. His current whereabouts are unknown. Okay, so there's some pretty dark implications here, right? Drug overdose suggests suicide. The fact that it happened immediately after he returned to the city suggests maybe they perhaps they got in some sort of argument. Maybe they, I don't know. Attempted to run home, return home. The void out was triggered immediately after his return. Okay, so. Perhaps there was something going on with them that we're unaware of. I've just concluded my first se uh, therapy session with Sam Strand. It was not held at the patient's request. Sam's adoptive mother, President Strand, approached me in the hope I might help her son overcome his aphenphosphobia. Aphenphosphobia. Sam is... An intriguing case. His reluctance notwithstanding, he recognises that his condition has and will continue to cause him much distress. I suspect it's rooted in a childhood trauma, but unfortunately we have only just scratched the surface. I cannot even begin to speculate what it might be. Like many of the bridge's core team members, Sam is a doom sufferer. Unlike them, however, he's also a repatriate. Whether or not this is related to his aphenphosphobia, I cannot say at this time, but he would hardly be the first to manifest phobias as a result of his abilities. As an infant, 
Sam lost both parents and was adopted by President Strand. Owing to her stressful and time-consuming responsibilities, I can only presume that she was unable to afford him his su him sufficient attention, which is to say that a distant relationship with his adopted mother, mother may be con a contributing factor. It's previously mentioned that Sam is very reluctant to talk about himself. He's an intensely private individual and it will take time to build trust and convince him to open himself up to me. So both his parents died. I, I, I would presume that his aphanthosomphobia developed after Lucy's death because they obviously conceived a child so he can't be that, you know, averse to touching someone if they conceived a child. Number two. Progress has been slow, but Sam has finally started to open up to me. However, his recollection of early childhood is, con is confused and contradictory. He's, he has difficulty distinguishing between genuine memories and reoccurring dreams. Sam even claims to have met his stepsister, Amelie, on the beach several times while quite young. An impossible claim, to say the least. I'm only a little older than Sam, but I was born before the Death Stranding. A fact, that, a fact that tends to affect the way we think about the beach. In my professional opinion, the beach is a figment of our collective imagination. A shared delusion. But people born later are more likely to take its existence as a given. I wonder if they find comfort in the belief because it helps to explain phenomena like BTs and repatriates like Sam. Similarly, my theory is that Sam's manufactured childhood memories of the beach are his way of coping with the fact that neither Amelie nor Bridget spent much time with him. I believe this is also the reason he still clings to the dream catcher Amelie gave him even now as an adult. You could call it his security blanket. It may also be the key to overcoming his aphanthosomphobia. Excuse me. If Sam were to emotionally distance himself from Amelie, it might reduce his resistance to physical intimacy. I will propose this approach to him in our next session. I mean, that touches on some of the things I said about the whole thing maybe being some sort of grand illusion due to the trauma of losing his, his wife and child. Or major aspects of it, not all of it, but certain aspects of it. Particularly Amelie's manifestation. Report number three. It came as no surprise, but Sam was unreceptive to my suggestion and rejected my assessment of his relationship with Amelie. He asserted that he's not dependent on her or Bridget and even went so far as to question my credentials as a, as a psychotherapist. His pronounced resistance to the idea only serves as further evidence of his dependency. Nevertheless, there's little I can do if Sam is unwilling to explore the possibility, other than continue to share my observations and hope that he eventually changes his mind. For the time being, I've decided to focus instead on Sam's feelings towards Bridges and his place within the organisation. Given that it was founded to support and protect his adopted mother, and that the other core members have dooms like he does. I think there is something to be gained from the discussion. His growing responsibilities within Bridges due to their expanding mandate and his abilities as a repatriate surely put him under great, greater pressure. And I wonder if his enthusiasm for their mission was sincere. Based on our time spent together thus far, I believe he may have embraced his role because it helped him to cope with feelings of isolation that he pledged himself to an impossible endeavour because it was preferable to living and dying alone. Hmm. So maybe um, Bridget knew that Sam was a, a repat uh, had dooms or was a repatriate from when he was a child, which is why she adopted him, and like 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 this says, or everyone who works there, the core members, the the high ranking members, are all have dooms. 
I mean, there's a one possibility. That's just very unlikely, but the, he, he, he could have triggered the void out on purpose because he might be working for the terrorists. I don't know. I mean, it's a very interesting notion that we could be playing as the true villain of the game. That could be interesting. I mean, I doubt that's true. Just throwing it out there. Um, but the fact that it, you know, the void out occurred immediately after he returned there. I've deci I decided a different pr approach was required. I'm getting the feeling we're not going to get any concrete answers from these. But... And so I requested a meeting with the president. Discretion was vital as any information which might suggest she is receiving mental health treatment could be exploited by her opponents. The meeting was listed as an interview in official records, though I was more than willing to offer my services had they been requested. I opened by asking about Sam's childhood, to which the president responded with an immediate and heartfelt apology. A frankness shocked me, I must confess. She expressed deep regret for her failure to engage with him, physically and emotionally, as she felt a mother should. At times it felt as though she was apologising to her son by proxy. Her candour was as impressive as it was appreciated. The president told me that her daughter, Amelie, had mostly taken care of Sam in her absence. She glossed over the details, but she divulged that Amelie also has dooms, and claimed that she would often take Sam to, with her to play on the beach. Interestingly, President Strand suggested that their time spent together there may be related to his current condition mm, that's not good I mean if he's afraid of people touching him well I've not got report number five. Oh, where did I get these from is there a report number five I decided to share with Sam my working theory regarded his regarding his condition I was Prepared for some resistance, but the intensity of his anger was surprising. He glared at me as he reframed my assessment as wild speculation. He had been brainwashed by a cult. It was the first time I'd managed to coax from him such a powerful emotional response. While I found it a little frightening, I did my best to remain professional, welcoming the breakthrough. The, redu re the reduction in the distance between us... That was how I presented myself, but in retrospect, part of me was delighted by his aggressive response. Sam stated that he is a repatriate. I challenged him and said that repatriate was nothing more than a fiction used to explain the phenomena of near-death experiences. One that makes use of the equally fictional beach. Emboldened, I pressured him further until I finally told him to snap out of it. To renounce his fantasies about the other side. For an instant, I thought he might explode in anger again, but instead he grew quiet. After a long moment, rose to his feet and left the room without saying another word. I fear I may have pushed him too hard. Interesting, man. Very interesting. So this is the first time we've had really any real in-game suggestion that some of this could be delusions, could be trauma-based. Although I have suggested something like it already, it's uh, interesting things to consider the reality of what we're living through. I have a feeling that that things are more literal than that. That the beach and everything is more tangible, but. Be something different. Okay, let's pick up this order for the uh, the Evo Devo uh, biologist. There you go. Let's just listen to the briefing. You won't find what the Evo Devo biologist needs there, Sam. Afraid you'll just have to collect the tar yourself. She initially deployed equipment for this very purpose near a BT hotspot, but after the weather took a turn for the worse, retrieving samples herself ceased to be an option. So it's up to you now to track down all the units and do what she couldn't. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Don't forget to bring her that ammonite the paleontologist gave you. 
Proceed with the utmost caution, Sam. There's a lot of ways this could go wrong. Okay, great. BT area. Mob medium. Four smalls. Pretty light. Okay. Got some PCCs to take. Got some climbing anchors. We could probably do with some more hematics, and we've got the level two hematics as well. Let's pick up some of them. We've got a bowler gun as a kind of get out of dodge weapon. We've got the anti BT stuff. Okay. Order assigned. So let's just see how these level twos work. L2 to prepare the grenade, hold L2 to fill it with blood. Okay, so we'll see how much our it all goes down. We've got an anti-BT handgun in place of the bowler gun. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to run into mules in this kind of area. Yeah, should be alright. Um, I've got some level 2 hematics, got some level 1 hematics as well. I think we should be fine. Let's just get a little refill charge on our battery. Keep on, keep on. I think it was, was in that direction, wasn't it? Okay, so... Seems like a pretty straight... We just need to sort of head for this little dip in the ridge. It might still be quite steep, but that's where we need to be aiming for. Then it's pretty much just down the down the hillside, and then over to the BTs, right? Clear. Weapons detected. All weapons will be locked until the weapons restrictions lifted. Okay, this is a bit steeper than I anticipated, but we should be all right. I hope I don't regret not bringing the bowler gun, but. Aloy! Hey, Aloy! Hey, Love that game. It's about time we had a had a, an actual ginger protagonist. <laughs> We're gross, grossly underrepresented. I can't think of. I'm trying to think. Is there any any game with a male ginger protagonist? Any, because it never happens in films, does it? Never. There's no like leading male characters with red hair. No. God, I keep getting. The sun keeps sort of appearing and reappearing. So sorry if my face starts looking paler than usual. <laughs> Okay, this should be pretty stressful. I don't know if we're going to get any intel on these like orange BTs, the the kind of indestructible ones. I'm really glad that I read those reports on Lucy. That's uh, got some hints at some very interesting ideas. I mean, I don't think that they're going to be true. The whole kind of delusions and stuff, and the beach being. A a figment of the imagination will be very hard pressed for all of that to be fictional at this point. But it's a possibility, but I mean, I suppose you could 
run with the idea that Sam might be might have killed Lucy working for the terrorists I don't know I mean it's possible it's not likely I don't think but maybe Sam is a mole who knows maybe there is some sort of split personality to him uh, I'm unsure but I don't think we've had I mean it's just that one thing that I saw while I was playing where when I went to the sink and there was the bit where he had the gold mask on himself which you know would might hint at something like that man this is a huge sort of is, this, is it a crater was there a void out here or is this a it's a tar pit isn't it yeah Got most of the way with no BTs. I think as soon as we get to the structures, I think that's, yeah, that's where all the black strands are. The cover for my backpack is is dead, pretty much. Maybe it's got like 15, 20 percent on it. Right, let's keep scanning. See if we picked up a few of them. One, two, three. We only need four, right? Because we've already got one part of the delivery. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, we got the other one. Okay, so... Evo Devil Biologist is in that direction, right? Mm. Oh, she's not on the map anymore, but she's around here somewhere. Can we see the prepper station? It's going to be pretty tricky getting to it wherever it is. You can usually just about make out the prepper stations. I think it was a bit closer than that, wasn't it? I oh, never mind. Okay, so we should probably go around, get, start with with that one, and then just make our way out and up. That's probably the best way to do it. I don't know how infested this is. It's going to be bad, I know it's going to be bad. Can't walk in it, is it? That's tar, isn't it? Let's just hope there's no orange ones. Maybe a Higgs will show up, who knows? Yeah, that's the one thing I'm a bit. I haven't, unless I've just not read any of it yet. I really haven't got any more on Higgs. Let's not pick up uh, any other cargo because we might need to run out of here at some point. Yeah, Higgs, Higgs feels like he hasn't been fleshed out enough for me. And even if they do flesh him out, I feel like it's going to be too late at this point. You know, there's, I feel I, 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 I don't really care about Higgs. This, dro this drop's going to hurt, man. Even go in the tar. Okay, I might take a few out. It's a little group of three of them there. Let's try out these new level twos.
There was a tiny one as well, wasn't there? I got it. I'll tell where this one is, unless it's the, the baby one again. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, hello there, sir. mistake. I think I got him. So, does this reload? Uh, it doesn't have much in it at all, does it? I need to not use them as much. the one more finish on, we need to get one from over here, right? Another little cluster there. We've got company. Yeah, I know, dude. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Two more there. A lot over the top here. It's all right, Lulu. use a grenade on that one it's going to attract a lot more maybe I could cut a cord here Pretty fucking scary. Let's see if we can just make our way around the other side I'm really close to the entrance. Oh, right, if we got this organized properly. Medium, small, small, small. Yep. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think we're out. Oh, my. Oh, I was holding my breath by accident. So, all right, Lulu. Wow, look at all those car of crystals. I haven't seen any orange BTs, they must be specific to that bit in the mountains. I have to cut a cord here. Don't know if it matters what direction you approach the BT from. Sack that. I've got loads anyway. It's too high up to cut the cord on though. There's another one just ahead. Come on, do it or don't. Yeah, I know it's all mushroomed. I think we're out, guys. Good, Lou. I think we're good. Let's get out of here, sharpish. Straight up this hill. Let's go. Beautiful. Yeah, still got no information on those orange uh, BTs. So maybe it was just. Something that we'll have to come across later in the story or something. Yeah, the top it was full of chiral crystals. So. I don't really need them for much else, I just pillaged from the various points in the game, uh, various stations in the game. I think it's, it's, that sh that sh it's only like 50 meters away, right? Yeah. Another dead biologist. This is our penultimate prepper, right? We've only got the veteran portal there, I think. Right? I don't know what if this area is represented by anyone or we're, we're creating the place that's going here, right? It's literally just the veteran portal left and Peter Bloody Engler. Kind of resigned to not getting him though. It's some tar for you. Oh. Sam. 
Not many people would have even attempted this. May I have a look? Not a scratch on it. And the tar inside is safe and secure. You do not disappoint, my friend. Excellent. Now, connect me to the Cairo network. That's where my studies will truly begin. That's everyone. Everyone we need, anyway. Tar bubbles from the beach. Thank you. It goes without saying, but I am convinced that the tar is related to the BTs and the Death Stranding. After all, both it and Timefall are the defining features of the post stranding ecosystem. Sudden environmental changes such as these invariably lead to the extinction of organisms that fail to adapt. Those that do adapt do so by virtue of enhancers, the regions of DNA that grant successful organisms their advantages. These genetic factors are the key to evolution. But there are genes which have the opposite effect, those which disadvantage organisms. Extinction factors, as they have been called. These are the seeds of advancement and obsolescence. Such factors may lie dormant within us all, a choice waiting to be made. For every being since the advent of life itself. If so, then ancient proof may hide deep within the tar. Evidence of these genetic decisions that may aid us in navigating our current crossroads. In any event, thanks to you, I can now study the composition of the tar in greater detail. I'll make sure to share any interesting results with you later. Well done, Sam. You furthered our research into the Death Stranding in ways you cannot imagine. Thank you again for bringing me Mama's body, as well as that ammonite. Speaking of which, my analysis of its umbilical cord is proceeding apace. I've been comparing the data against some of our restored archives. Anyway, would you mind returning to my lab? Damn. Preparations are finally complete for the Cairo Relay integration. If you could collect the necessary materials for the restoration work and bring them here, I would be most grateful. Good work. New order available. Let's collect them from Please here. Please access yeah. delivery terminal for further information. Oh, just want me to head back. So we're not that far away, what was it, seven, about 800 metres, so a couple of well-placed zips should get us up the mountain. Okay. Don't know if that one's on the wrong side of the ridge, just wish we could rotate them. Um, it's going to be really hard to climb up. But it will be worth it in the long run, I suspect. Need to rest, but I need some PCCs. Grenade launcher. A revolver style grenade launcher fires grenades whose effects are triggered on impact. Can be loaded with four types of ammo, anti-BT, hematic rounds, lethal grenade rounds, slip rounds, and non-lethal tranquilizer rounds. Enabling it to be used in a variety of combat situations and on a variety of targets. Despite these four very different effects, only one type of ammo is required due to the ability to define firing characteristics at the point of launch. Trust. Right, let's get a few feet. Oh, she's not got much in terms of chiral crystals. I'll donate some. Okay. 
So what we could do is doing there's someone's built a, a room here. Which is to the west, so let's run up there, rest in there, and then we'll try and climb up the, the steep side of the mountain to get back to Hartman's lab and build a couple of zip lines that should expedite that for any return journeys. It should be quite simple to five star these three. I think they'll go up quite quick and they've got a lot of orders for each other, so. Hopefully it shouldn't be too bad. Let's have a nice little rest watcher. Alright. We're going to be heading up that ways. So we could do is setting up like a, a base point. Right. Hartman's lab is Wait, where's Hartman's lab? Yeah, there. I just think of the best kind of way to go, really. I think it'd be best if we built like our one of our um, zip lines, kind of just here in the clearing, just to give it the best chance of being seen. So we're going. I'm going sort of that way, so maybe one at the top of that point there. Yeah, let's do that. Right, let's go. Okay, back up through the snow we go. That thermal <laughs> attachments on that look ridiculous. Of mini radiators on our arms. Construction complete. Well, an avalanche. Oh. What? Hey, hey, back up, mountain. That's awesome. Did you, what caused that? It's just a uh, area that has earthquakes, perhaps. That's <laughs> alright, Sam. That's what the all terrain skeleton's for, buddy. Okay. I think this ridge is going to be the one. I think if I veer off any further to the side, it's going to be out of sight. Should still be within. Okay, it's not that close. Okay, close to the 300 meter range. Let's just try and scramble to the top here. So we can just get to the top here. So, how far away? 
292. And Hartman's lab is where. Man, I hate how it's rough seeing the. It's to my left. There it is. Okay, so this is kind of the right way we want to go. Don't know if that one's better placed over there, but... Who knows? Hopefully that's the that might be obstructed, that might have been a stupid place to build it. Hello, copyright claim. Oh, we should be alright. Got one more PCC, so yeah, completely out of sight now. Oh, it's probably a rubbish place to build it. Let's see if we when we climb on top of this thing, maybe we can see it again. near the dangerous part, man. Okay, we should be able to see that. It's a bit too close to warrant building it though, right? Well, maybe not. We're about 250 away. It's just a shame I can't quite see this one. Maybe I will be able to see it. I mean, I can't see it, so let's just check. So it's still 240, so pretty close to maybe if I moved over this way a bit. Let's just see if that helps. I don't think their one is going to reach anything. We're pretty much right on the edge of where it can get to though. Okay, that's too far. Okay, I think that's as good as it's going to get. Let's just stick it there. It's all good, Lou. <laughs> Alright, can we see anything from here? Yes. 
Beautiful. able to head straight down to the one outside Harper's Line. Excellent. Yeah, we made it. Alright, Harbin. I mean, look at this big place. You would have thought you could have given us like a, a normal private room to stay in. Before. What was that weird beeping? Keep on keeping on. Are we going to actually speak to him again? Okay, Harbin. Should have taken those stupid thermal things off. Thank you, Sam. In reclaiming our past, we've uncovered a number of vital clues. Don't worry, I just got back. We have time. When you met with Mama, you experienced a strong antigen antibody reaction, correct? There was a BT in the room. There was, but something else may have been causing it. I've discovered large quantities of chiral matter in Mama as well. Not just the usual kind that collects on our skin or on our suits. It's in all her cells. Cells that are no longer active. The BT you encountered there was special. It was her child, but also her own soul. Somehow, her car and her failed to separate. They must have remained connected through the umbilical cord. It's the only explanation. Is that why I didn't get a bruise where she touched me? Yes. And there's more. Ten seconds to cardiac arrest. Five, four, three, two, one. I modified the log times. Headquarters will have no record of what we say. Nice. Look, a message from Dead Man. It came with the umbilical cord. Sam, uh, I'm sorry. You deserve to know what you were carrying. But I couldn't risk Die Hardman finding out about the case. So I had no choice but to keep it off the books. You've got to keep this between us. We still don't know if the director can be trusted. The umbilical cord was taken from Bridget Strand. I removed it in secret. The cord wasn't attached to a fetus. It was outside her body. She asked me to take care of it. Said it was the key to unlocking the death stranding. But she insisted that I never tell the director. The cord shows no sign of decomposition or necrotization. Almost as if it's frozen in time. I thought Hartman might be able to make sense of it. So I had it hidden with your cargo at Mountain Knot City. Dead Man's observations were accurate. It's just like Mama's corpse. What do you mean? I mean they share a very unique property. Both contain large amounts of Corellium in their cells. In other words, the President's cord was somehow connected to the beach, and that allowed it to escape the flow of time. I've put together the bones of a theory. It's patchy, but worth sharing, I think. Life on Earth has been rocked by many extinctions. Great and small, including the big five. And if you examine the Earth's strata, its history, if you will, you'll find Corellium deposits that can be dated to 
each. What if the manifestation of our, our beaches and other associated phenomena correspond to extinction level events? You mean? Yes. Our death stranding could just be the latest of many. The records and research you helped us to recover strongly suggest that we are in the middle of the sixth extinction. Sixth extinction? Come on. You know what this is, yes? A frozen mammoth from 10,000 years ago. Correct. And this? The Iceman from our five, 5,300 years ago. They both have the same umbilical cords. Ugh, bullshit. Humor me. What if the mammoth and the Iceman weren't frozen? You're saying time stopped for them just like it did for Mama? Hmm. Unfortunately, all these specimens were lost in the Death Stranding, so there's no way to examine the genuine articles. But some fragments of data did survive. With the aid of the chiral network, we may be able to piece together something more concrete using Evodevo tech. All right. How's this? A dinosaur from 65 and a half million years ago. Umbilical cord? Not decomposed. Uh -uh. Only mammals have umbilical cords. Mm -mm. No. Only mammals have umbilical cords used for childbirth. This is something else. Call it a strand from the um, other side. I propose that mammalian umbilici are a sort of mimesis of the strand that then evolved over time. We shouldn't assume that everything about a death stranding is detrimental to life. Trilobites, ammonites, dinosaurs, the mammoth, the iceman, all preserved as if frozen in time, all without exception, found with strands, which is to say that all may have been connected to the beach. And this, when viewed in the context of the extinction entity, EE theory, leads me to surmise that organisms with strands are in fact extinction entities. You see, Sam, E's are connected to the beach via their strands. And it is through this connection that they somehow bring about a death stranding. So you're saying Bridget was an extinction entity? It's far too soon to say anything for certain. And since you burned her body, we may never know. Hicks said Amelie's an EE, and she doesn't have dooms like the rest of us. Sam, think. Assume that President Strand was an EE. Isn't it possible that her daughter is too? At the very least, Higgs may hope as much now that the president is unavailable. So he kidnaps her for EE powers or whatever to cause a mass extinction. Hmm. Perhaps, perhaps not. I doubt a single EE is powerful enough to cause a death stranding, assuming Amelie is an EE. Well, Higgs sure thinks she's got what it takes. Indeed. And we need to get her back as soon as possible. One minute remaining. Please hold on to something secure. Ah, this one is real. Sam, go west. How do you want me to handle Die Hardman? With your customary reserve. Nothing good will come of him learning of our suspicions. Whatever else is going on, we still need the chiral network. Right. Security measures. Extinction entities. So they inadvertently bring on the strand. Okay. 
I think this is going to be to rebuild that station, isn't it? It's time, Sam. When you're ready, proceed to the shore of the tar belt and begin work on the chiral relay. Once it's ready, use the cupid to bring it online. The necessary materials are prepped for you. Supplies are limited, so handle them with care. You'll be carrying a lot, too. All things considered, this might be one of your hardest runs to date. Hartman knows more about the site than I do, so he'll take it from here. It's about time for his wake-up call anyway. Administering shock. Stand clear. Right. About that way station. The site we have chosen was an original candidate for the way station we lost to the top melt. Uh, ironically, we suspended construction because we deemed it a little too unstable and not worth the risk. But this time, it's our best shot. So let's hope we weren't right to change horses in midstream. Fortunately for us, the foundation we laid down is still intact. All you have to do is transport the necessary materials to the site <coughs> and finish the job. I'm afraid it's the only way we can expand the network further west and rescue Armony. We're counting on you, Sam. So, it's going to be a lot of materials, right? Well, so, one, two, three, four, five larges. But it's pretty heavy, though, isn't it? I mean, it's... Um... 150k. It's quite a long way away. I mean, we could follow the river, right? Once we get past the BT area, we can follow the river. Hmm. So I think uh, what's probably best for me to do, because like we've been warned, this is quite a, a hefty journey. So I'm gonna head back. I'm just gonna. You know, get a new cover for my backpack. Get, you know, get new versions of everything, like the skeletons, the thermal pads if they've been, if they've eroded. Some just, you know, just refresh everything so that we've got everything we need for the journey. So I think I'll leave this one here, guys. We've um, got some, learned some interesting information from Hartman about the about the extinction entities, about how these umbilical cords have been present throughout time during other extinction level events and Bridget herself was suspicious of Die Hardman too so. imagine things might hit the fan in the next episode so we'll see how it progresses hope you enjoyed this one guys leave me a thumbs up if you did just remember everybody never trust an on crate